<laughs> Welcome back, guys. And tonight, we've got the review of the 12-inch SMBA Rainfall Showerhead. I'll be honest with you guys. I used these when I was a kid, like once or twice. And I didn't think I'd really have much to say about this coming into this. Out of all the videos I've done, this is one I was least looking forward to. But with that said, after two weeks, we've definitely got some stuff to go over. And I am excited to share with you guys. So I guess with that said, let's get started. All right, so time for the review. Let's go back to two weeks ago and see what my first words were when I got out of the shower. All right, so I just got out of my very first shower with it. And I ended up going behind after the video and taking that the valve off. So that way it is full pipe all the way to the head. And uh, I, I, it, it runs better. So my first impressions is, is a lot of water. <laughs> That's all I've got to say is a lot of water. We'll see how it holds up for the next two weeks, though. All right, so that was my first impressions. Now let's look at the notes I made afterwards because I, I took down some very construct, constructive notes. First impressions were as follows. I noticed the joint for the shower head. It's a heavy shower head. Held fine. Could move it around. Didn't fall. Even full of the water. It's a lot of water. Construction of the whole unit, I was pleased with it. It did not seem like a $20 shower head at all. It seemed very nicely built. Another thing, comparing it to the overhead, which you really, really want an overhead. You don't want it tilting towards you like that. Taking everything out full bore, except the screen for debris, which you need to leave that in. I feel like I was getting 75% of the performance in, in the tilted arrangement. 50% when I had the valve in there, which was cutting down flow already. So there's a little more loss there. So the note there that I made, you really should raise it up. Um, with that said, due to it being a 12 inch shower head, there is a lack of pressure because there's so much volume, but the volume makes up for that pressure. So you're not gonna have issues getting water, getting shampoo out of your hair. Believe me, you're not. You're not going to have an issue. Um, if you are seeking some pressure, insisting on it, I would say in a tilted setup, eight inches. Uh, up here, I would say it doesn't matter. Um, eight inches, if you already have water pressure issues, I would say six, maybe go eight. You can always go to Amazon and trade it for a bigger one. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I noticed on the first impression was that and you're gonna see why in a minute. Uh, my drain was not able to keep up. I do my own plumbing. My fixtures and my drains are running at max performance all the time. It just puts out a lot of water. Um, if you have those hair strainers in your drain, you're really gonna have issues getting this thing to drain. You, you're, it's not gonna overflow your tub, but it is slowly gonna rise over time. But as you'll see here in a little bit, that's not gonna be an issue because of runtime. <laughs> Um, my thoughts was that I kind of wish it had a little bit smaller nub holes, um, which kind of defeats the purpose of a rainfall shower head. You want that full drop versus a stream. So kind of something that I thought. Now on to the actual review. This is what I noticed over the whole two weeks of using this. The joint has paint on it. It's not anodized or anything where I had the pliers, smooth, smooth jaw pliers to, to tighten it up. The paint would kind of chip and on the threads, the paint would kind of chip a little bit. There it is. It's, it's just cosmetic. Not gonna be an issue, but something I noted. Uh, another thing, the coverage is absolutely full. There is no issues with the nozzles clogging or misdirecting water. It seemed like they shot straight the entire time. But again, use the screen. Your water is dirtier than you think it is. Um, and that's the same reason why I had issues with my gallons per minute testing because it's a, such a large spray. And on the topic of gallons per minute, that was the numbers we're going to go over next. So this is a 44 gallon trash can. <laughs> that is 15 seconds worth of water. So as you saw, that was 15 seconds worth of water. And that does translate to 4.6 gallons per minute. My diverter, you know, the thing that shoots the water in tub free to pull the knob up, was 5.6 gallons per minute. 
For those of you that may not know, that is a absolute ton of water. Hence why the tub can't keep up. It is a lot of water. It is a ton. You, you really need to use that, that flow restrictor for once. Um, but the trash can I had to buy just to catch 15 seconds worth of water, that 44 gallon, because I, everything was too small. And as for runtime, this is something that I really want you guys to pay attention to because this is what's most important. How long can you run the shower head? And I ran this through several tests, realistic tests. The first one being restricted. The time I got of a restricted shower where the, where the pressure was lower and I was just taking a shower trying to save water. This is what I got. 13 minutes, 40 gallon uh, hot water heater. I live in an apartment. It's, I guarantee it's never been flushed before. So you'll probably a little bit, a few minutes more than that maybe. Um, the next test I did was just a normal, full pressure, normal person shower, like day-to-day -day shower. This is what I got. This next test I did, you know when you get off work, you wanna get in the shower, nice and hot, maybe shave a little bit, and then when you get down here, like, I really just wanna get it hotter again because you, know, you get used to that temperature. In that situation, which I find myself in quite a bit, this is what you get. And lastly, this is my favorite. I know five minutes is not very much, it gets worse. If you get in that shower and you want to just melt your skin, just really rip that hot, which I don't, I don't recommend doing that, it's dangerous. You can scald yourself. If you really want to know how long that water is going to last, if you keep it hot, this is the number. So that's the run times. Now, on a slight off note, nobody has been arguing about this, and I really want to answer that. What I've wondered is, what makes a more pleasurable experience in the shower? Uh, a shower where there's a lot of mist, so the so it's losing energy to the air, so the air around you is warmer than the water, even though it's kind of equalizes out, or a shower where you have all the water is holding the heat in like, like a solid stream. So it's not losing much energy to the air. As you know, my, my, my own Navia is that type of shower. It's a fine mist versus this is a strictly a stream. And it became apparent very instantly when I first got in. If you're looking to have a more comfortable hot shower, a more of a mist is best. And I can also tell you that, that my mirror agrees with me too. The more mist it is, the hotter the bathroom gets quicker in the shower. Sure, the water cools off a little bit, but it, it makes for a better experience than having just a stream of water where much, not much energy is being lost to the air. I noticed that on the very first shower and I noticed it the whole time I was using it. So at, at the end of the day, I would say that if, if you're looking for a rainfall shower head, I think this video is gonna point you in a very good direction and show you what options you may or may not want to consider, dual tanks, which is expensive investment, but if you're wanting a true rainfall shower head, that would be a good idea. Um, or keeping your tank flushed or flow restrictors. But either way, that's what I have for you today. So with that said, if you have any questions for me, put in the comments. Anything you want me to review or try, put in the comments. With that said, thank you guys very much for watching. You have a good night.